Karma Siche, who calls himself a born activist, is a Tibetan artist in exile whose work exhibits an amalgamation of his art and activism. I would like to introduce you to Karma Siche. Karmala, it's so good to have you here for today's episode. Welcome to our show. Tish dile. Tish dile. Karmala, you have been involved with paintings for over 25 years and you have studied both the uh, traditional and the contemporary art forms. Initially, you worked a lot with Thanga paintings, but then you decided to drop that completely and pursue with your current interest. Karmala, can you share with us about your journey mm -hmm. from moving out of Thanga painting? Mm -hmm. I started Thanga when I was age uh, 16. And uh, it's not that I like such a uh, per se on, on Thanga painting itself. I got the opportunity and I grabbed it at that time to learn under one of the renowned uh, Tanga master, Rinzing Benjula, late Rinzing Benjula. And, uh, and then, you know, as I move on, I like the process, I like the, uh, the outcome, and I like, you know, uh, the, the, the whole journey of making the Tanga itself. And then as I grew older in the, in the professional, and uh, it's never enough. And then I somehow feel like Thangka painting is too religious mm -hmm. and I need more than that. Mm -hmm. and so that is the idea spark in my mind and uh, so I came out of Thangka and did a many different touch, many different medium to express my feelings and the day to day life about how I feel things. So that's the long story short of my journey as a painter. Okay, so Karmala, artists, they try to convey their ideas and their beliefs through art. Uh, can you tell us what kind of paintings are you doing now and mm -hmm. what are your paintings trying to convey? Mm -hmm. Usually, <coughs> it's an uh, it's inner self-portrait and uh, through the self-portrait, uh, inner self-portrait, I try to express the day-to-day -day life that I'm dealing through and the experience that I have in day-to-day and then trying to, it's painting, it's, it's, it's the same as writing a story or novel. It's a process where you tell your own stories, your kind of stories, and how you express things, how you see things around. That's how I do a day-to-day. -day, uh, and uh, through the art, you know, sometimes you have a s sense of satisfaction. Sometimes the outcome is really frustrating. So that's the kind of, uh, the the life that I'm living. Okay, uh, so Karmala, like I have mentioned uh, in your introduction that your work is an amalgamation of your art and activism. Can you give us an example? Mm -hmm. For instance, let's take that painting uh, where I can see mm -hmm. a snow lion crushing the dragon. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us the story behind this painting? Uh, as I grew up as an orphan in TCV school in Dramsala and uh, I have grown up with lots of feeling of frustration, disconnected, and uh, anger mm -hmm. of the situation that you are dealing with. And uh, naturally, being born, a, uh, born as a refugee Tibetan, you are born uh, with, the, with the such a political situation that it's, it's very influenced to uh, very, very much uh, uh, influence your mind mm -hmm. growing up. So as a, as a Tibetan, you know, I feel there are a lot, uh, I feel frustrated, I feel because of the situation that I'm dealing. And uh, then the situation uh, that you deal, you go through lots of angers. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this a painting, for the symbolism, if you know the symbolism of the form, you will kind of understand what it means, you know. Uh, snow lion represent the Tibet and dragon symbolize the China. Snow lion crushing the dragon, yeah. but dragon still looks dignified mm -hmm. and both looks dignified. This is the kind of, you know, the frustration and anger and, the, and then the environment that I'm surrounded and the, the things that I observe, mm -hmm. feel, I try to put in a painting. 
And that is really interesting, Karmala. And I feel that not just a Tibetan, but anyone who is aware of the Tibetan cause, who is aware of the Tibetan issue, can relate to the mm -hmm. story uh, that you have just said. OK, Karmala, so uh, can you tell us how you are letting the younger generation know about the Tibetan issue and the Tibetan culture through art? Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally, when I do art, uh, I don't try to uh, influence people. Okay. You know, I try to tell my own story. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have a mindset of, you know, to reach out to people, it is destruction for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it doesn't reach m my true sense of feeling. So what I'm trying to do is, you know, I'm trying to paint what I observe around me and what I feel. And through that, you know, I, I only wish that I have for the observer is, they narrate their own story out of my painting. They uh, make their own meaning out of my own painting. Because you know, I have strong belief mm -hmm. that the painting uh, speaks itself. Mm -hmm. So Kamala, basically what you're trying to say is that you're trying to put all your feelings and everything that you see around you in the painting and you're giving the freedom to the audience to predict their own stories through your painting, right? Yeah, as I told you, painting is a kind of uh, storytelling. It's a different me medium to tell the story. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I really wish the people to create their own narration mm -hmm. and story and the feeling. Uh, unlike you know the words, the words are very rigid, yeah. and it it forces you to think the way the writer uh, think. You know, mm -hmm. but for the painting, you know, it gives a freedom for both the painter and the viewer to feel the outcome of the subject. I don't try to influence people, yeah. but I strongly believe that uh, that the painting has a power to to change the perspective of the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Karmala, can you tell us about the exhibitions that you normally hold mm -hmm. and also the response that you receive from the people regarding your art? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a very short uh, uh, life uh, uh, of, of, of uh, exhibiting, my li uh, exhibiting my work because in during the Tanka painting, I can't uh, exhibit. So. My experience of exhibiting a solo uh, uh, painting, a solo exhibition, it's, it's not that old, it's young. And uh, I have done the, uh, four solo exhibitions and one group uh, exhibition, and one is coming up now. And uh, so through the experience and the journey of exhibiting my work, uh, I have a lot of, lot of blessing from the people who are artists, who are non-artists, who are art lovers. That uh, one incident that I have, st and it still remember, I still remember it, you know, there's one old artist lady. Uh, she said, you know, she pray that I will never leave the brush and the paint from my life. And she requests me and give me a whole blessing mm -hmm. to continue in, as a journey of, as, as a painter, yeah. So that's the kind of blessing that I get from the weaver. And, uh, and, and I feel more uh, blessed. And I, I value this kind of blessing more than the money because uh, the money goes mm -hmm. and the blessing stays in, in your heart, yeah. So Kamala, other than your paintings and your unique pieces of art, I can also see that you have uh, Tibetan dolls and you have books and other varieties in the workshop. Mm -hmm. And uh, Karmala, I believe that you and your wife Mona also run Dolls for Tibet. And in fact, you have this program called Donate the Dolls mm -hmm. where you um, go to schools and distribute the dolls among the children. Mm -hmm. uh, so Karmala, can you tell us the purpose of this program and how are you making this happen? To create a Tibetan doll is to reach out to our own younger generation and to, to introduce our own story mm -hmm. and to introduce our own custom. During this process, uh, it's a one way mm -hmm. to reach out to the Tibetan that uh, we ask the donation mm -hmm. from the people, friends, mostly from the friend circle, mm -hmm. and uh, we collect the donations and then the getting a lump sum of, 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 um, of money and a fund that you receive 
and then we uh, we collect the uh, Tibetan do uh, dolls, mm -hmm. and then distribute around the around the schools. So we have a DCV uh, upper Suja, Gobalpur, and then Ladakh, uh, Yoling School, Nubalinga Crush. Uh, so we are manage to reach out to the Tibetan uh, young uh, generation. And uh, through this process, you know, we are grateful from the people's uh, contribution and grateful. And if you know more about the, uh, this project, uh, go for dollsfortibet.com, dollsfortibet.com. So through that uh, uh, website, you will get the details. As also, we have a book called Once I Was Nomad, created by my wife. The story is written by my wife, Mona and uh, illustrated by my uh, elder daughter. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's the same idea to reach out to the Tibetan and non-Tibetan mm -hmm. younger generation to introduce a Tibetan story in a, in, in a very gentle way. And also to introduce the Tibetan culture and yes. tradition, right? Yes. So uh, that comes with that because um, we like to introduce a Tibetan story, culture, mm -hmm. custom, in a very organic way, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I, I also like the idea that, uh, you know, like you have uh, varieties of dolls and there are like, you know, different kinds of, like there are, I can see that there are Amdo, there are Utsang, and you know, I feel that most of the children, they will know about their culture, their tradition through these dolls. They will know the difference, the costumes and, you know, the traditional dress and everything. I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. And also I can see, Karmala, that you are not good just with paintings, colors and brushes, but also with other creative other creative varieties as well. For example, my favorite is the bamboo clothes hanger. And also I love these shells. And these are definitely adding more beauty to your workshop. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karmala, for speaking to Tibet TV. It was so lovely to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Lasakina. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.